Do not leave your 3D printer unattended. Sure, that's good practice, especially with ones that have, you know, questionable cable management or use cheap components, but are you really going to babysit the machine the entire time? I don't think so. Especially when things like noise, particle emissions, and printing smells are something you don't really want to have right next to you. So, Octoprint is actually a very good first step for that. It allows you to remote control a 3D printer from anywhere you have access to the same network that your printer's Raspberry Pi is on. But you still have to actively watch the webcam stream and you can't leave the house or you're going to lose the connection. So, that is where the Spaghetti Detective comes in and it promises to solve both those problems. It's a web service that you can use to check in on your prints from anywhere around the world and tweak or stop things if you need to, but it's also an AI that watches that webcam feed for you and will either just alert you or actually halt the print if it thinks there's something going seriously wrong. So let's see how good an AI can be at detecting print failures and how useful the Spaghetti Detective really is. And you know what's really useful for finding the perfect coffee? Today's sponsor, Trade Coffee. And you know what, you don't even have to leave the house for it, which I hear is convenient these days. Trade connects you to the top roasters in the US and it matches you to the coffee that suits your taste in three easy steps. One, complete the online quiz on drinktrade.com where there are no wrong answers. I drink my coffee black, not a fan of the acidic flavors, but I do like some good aroma in there. Trade will match you to a selection of coffees just for you. Two. Pick your coffees and how often you want them delivered to your doorstep, fresh from the roaster. Trade only delivers to the US, I know how long international shipping can take, and coffee does take best when it is fresh. Three, well, there is no three, enjoy your coffee. But you can go in and rate what you liked about your coffees and you'll get new recommendations on which ones you should try next. Try out Trade through the link in the description below and you'll get free shipping and 30% off your first bag of coffee when you sign up. Thanks again to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. The Spaghetti Detective is thankfully really easy to set up. It's two components. One is the cloud web service, which also does the AI image processing and you can either use the one that the folks from the Spaghetti Detective are providing, or you set up your own server if you want to. It's open source software after all. And the other component is an Octoprint plugin, which basically just remote controls Octoprint itself, which I think is awesome because first of all, you know, why reinvent the wheel and create a whole other printer server when there's already a perfect solution available in the form of Octoprint. But second of all, you then also get a fully featured Octoprint server that you set up. And of course that is fully functional for printer control, file management, etc., on your local network. The setup is super quick if you already have Octoprint running. You create an account on the Spaghetti Detective website, install the plugin into Octoprint, and then you just copy paste a secret key from the website to the plugin, and that's it. If you want to start a print, you can either use the Octoprint interface and do it the normal way, and the Spaghetti Detective will pick up that your printer is now printing something, or on the paid plans, you can also upload and start prints through the Spaghetti Detective web interface. And after that, just choose if you want the Spaghetti Detective to stream and watch the print, and whether it should pause or just alert you if it thinks something is wrong, and that's it. So I guess we should briefly talk about the free and the paid options. Like I said, the Spaghetti Detective is an open source project, so if you really want to, you can use all the features it has without spending a single penny. But that's going to entail setting up your own server, maintaining that, as well as making sure that's securely available on the internet if you want to access it remotely. Also, apparently the actual processing that's happening with the print failure detection AI is a bit intense and too much for the little Raspberry Pi that's already trying to keep up with consistently trying to feed data to the printer. So if you don't want to manage your own server, the Spaghetti Detective offers a few different convenient paid tiers that give you access to more features as you go up. There is a free tier, which lets you remote control the printer and gives you a low frame rate webcam stream, as well as 10 hours per month of the AI watching your prints and intervening if you wanted to. You can actually earn more watch hours by, for example, giving feedback on your prints. The free tier lets you use the remote control and webcam features as much as you want. But for the compute intensive AI watching features, there is a limit. 
uploading or starting a print through the Spaghetti Detective is limited to the paid tiers as well. And those also include a higher frame rate live webcam stream as well as a larger allowance of AI watch hours per month. To me, just getting the peace of mind of being able to check in on your prints if you decide to leave your printer uh, while you go out and being able to actually intervene and stop the print if you need to is already a huge deal. And you actually get that in the free plan already. But for the AI features, whether paying for them is worth it really depends on whether they actually work. So I have done some testing. I've actually combined this with my testing for the Artillery X1 review. So you're going to see this printer as my guinea pig in all these time lapses. So for the print failure detection AI, it really needs to do two things for it to be useful. And that's that it should correctly detect prints that are okay as okay. So no false positive alerts, because if you have the spaghetti detective set to pause whenever it senses an issue, that will cause more harm than it solves when it pauses too often. But of course, also, it needs to be able to correctly identify issues when they happen and then take action, so no false negatives. And just to get my bearings, I started with the Strata Miniatures Rogue that you also saw in the last video, this time scaled to 300%, and this is sliced with the Slick Fira Slicer that Artillery supply for their X1. And this one lit up like a Christmas tree. So the Spaghetti Detective highlights the areas that it thinks are failing, and that was pretty interesting to see because yes, the auto-generated supports by SlickVR are not that great. Well, but they're actually pretty bad. And those did topple over and cause some spaghetti, uh, which as far as I can tell was correctly detected, but it also detected random high detail areas or just glossy top surfaces that were actually fine. But honestly, I would rather have it detect too much and alert me one too many times, uh, then just overlook an issue and you know waste filament or even damage the printer by not intervening. So, okay, there was a lot going on in this print. At this point, I'm thinking it is maybe a bit too sensitive, which would be fine. So let's step it down a notch and just, you know, print benchies. Like if this neural network was trained on anything, it better know what a good 3D printy, 3D printy. It better know what a good 3D benchy should look like. I printed two good ones, this one and this one, and those correctly detected as being flawless. So far, so good. So next I tried some that had some actual issues. For example, a Benchy that is extruded with a 30% extrusion multiplier, this one as well. So it's only getting one third of the filament the print would actually need to print well. And according to the spaghetti detective, this is perfectly fine too. Honestly, I am surprised by how well this is coming out, but the holes in the surface were clearly visible even in the low resolution webcam feed. Okay, so maybe it was the contrasty lighting that threw it off, uh, so I added more lights, these guys. But that also didn't change anything. According to the Spaghetti Detective, this is still a perfectly fine print. Okay, so maybe a layer shift will get it excited. So I prepared a G-code that intentionally shifts the Y-axis at 10 millimeters print height, starting with a five millimeter offset, which actually wasn't all that much of an issue for the printer. And the Spaghetti Detective also did not detect it. Next, 10 millimeters, which has some visible spaghettiization going on. Also, nothing detected really. So I upped that to 25 millimeters, which basically takes the entire upper half of the Benchy and throws it aboard. And finally, that was detected as maybe being a bit of a problem. Now, of course, there are some technical limitations that play into how well the software is going to be able to recognize what's going on. The biggest limitation obviously is the camera and not this specific camera. This is a 1080p one that is actually quite decent, but the fact that it is a camera, uh, it's only ever in one spot. It doesn't see in stereo like we do. Um, and when you try to get the whole print bed into frame, you know, details that would determine whether a print is failing or successful do become pretty small and hard to pick up. And when you don't have the camera mounted to the bed like I did at the start, there is a lot of motion blur when the print bed moves while the camera is grabbing a frame. There's also the issue of lighting. You want everything to be like evenly lit, but not so evenly that you stop seeing any sort of detail. So much of my testing has been focused on trying to see whether I could improve the error detection rate by giving the spaghetti detective better data. 
added lighting from the direction that the camera is looking in, I mounted the camera to the print bed so that there wouldn't be any motion blur, and I increased the resolution Octoprint is getting from the camera from the default 640 by 480 pixels to 1280 by 720 aka 720p. And none of all this seemed to make a difference. With my human eyes, I could basically see every failure of these uh, happening on the camera feed, which is the same feed that the spaghetti detective is looking at. But even under what I would consider best case scenarios, the AI was barely ever able to recognize that there was anything wrong. Now, that's not to say that it never works. It picked up on some of the more severe failures and the Spaghetti Detective website does showcase a few failing prints that are correctly identified, but it always seems to be at a point where it's already pretty far gone. At that point, you're really just protecting the printer from damaging itself. But what I've asked myself while using the Spaghetti Detective is, you know, even if it was 100% accurate and reliable, what are you going to do with that information that your print is failing? You're not going to save the print. All you can do is to stop and start over. Uh, this time, hopefully having fixed what was causing the problem, but it's really just reacting to something that has already happened. Best case versus checking your printer every two hours or so through Octoprint would be saving a couple grams of filament, getting to restart the print a bit faster, and possibly less cleanup on the printer. Sure, it could be a nice extra safety net if you're printing overnight, or you simply don't want to check the printer that often, but with how unreliable the detection has been for me so far, I really don't know if I'd be sleeping any better. The AI really still needs a lot of improvement and more training. But three features that do make the Spaghetti Detective quite useful already, and you already get those currently on the free plan. They are, like I mentioned, uh, being able to watch the print from anywhere. Then, since you're already sending a live stream to the Spaghetti Detective, you can rewatch all your past prints and download a time lapse from the webcam's perspective, which is neat but that's also built into Octoprint now. And lastly, they are experimenting with offering an Octoprint tunnel, which would allow you to securely access the full Octoprint interface from basically anywhere. But it's still in beta and managed to completely crash my Octoprint eight hours into a two-day print uh, the first time I tried that feature. So maybe, maybe, you know, use that feature sparingly until it's fully tested and released. Now for the paid options, well, there is a one month free trial where you can use all the features without any limits. And you should definitely use that to check if the spaghetti detective can detect the sort of issues that you're expecting and whether that extra information is going to be useful for you. I will mostly be using it for, you know, just basic remote webcam viewing. Let me know in the comments below what you're using to keep an eye on your printer when you're not standing right next to it. I'd really like to know what works for you. And as always, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, get subscribed. And if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon or through YouTube memberships. Thanks again to Trade Coffee for already supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Keep on making and I will see you in the next one. Bye.